The movie begins with a suspenseful scene where 12 carefully selected strangers suddenly find themselves in an unfamiliar setting. Each one wakes up with their mouths bound by locked gags, disoriented and without any idea of their current whereabouts or the situation they're in. In their confusion, they stumble upon a mysterious crate positioned in the center of a vast field. Inside the crate, they discover an oddly dressed up pig alongside a stash of various weapons. While the purpose of these items remains unclear, the strangers quickly decide to arm themselves, suspecting they might need them for protection or potential survival. However, as they cautiously navigate their surroundings, they come under unexpected attack from unseen assailants. One by one, some of the strangers meet their tragic end. What they soon come to realize is that they've unwillingly become participants in a macabre game, a twisted hunt organized by a group of elitists from Vermont. These elites relish in hunting humans for sport and the weapons given to the strangers were merely to provide an illusion of a fair fight. As the brutal game continues, members of the group are systematically targeted and eliminated. A handful of the surviving strangers eventually find their way to a fence, with only three successfully making it past and reaching a nearby gas station. They encounter a seemingly ordinary couple running the station. At first, the couple mistakes the survivors for robbers, but the survivors quickly clarify that they only want information information about their location. The couple informs them they are in Arkansas, seeking to alert the authorities. One survivor requests to use the phone. However, the scene takes a dark twist when one of the survivors consumes a cookie offered by the couple, only to choke on it as if it's spoiled with poison. The seemingly normal couple's manner changes drastically. They swiftly wear masks and release a smoke grenade, causing further panic. In the ensuing chaos, before the survivors can retaliate, the store owners launch their deadly assault, overpowering and killing the unsuspecting strangers. After the violent encounter with some of the hunted, the couple running the station quickly get to work. They clear the area, methodically cleaning up and disposing of the dead bodies, but their work isn't done just yet. Soon the radio crackles to life, and the couple receives a call. The voice on the other end, likely the person orchestrating this twisted game, informs them of another hunted individual heading their way. This new arrival is none other than Crystal, the story's main character. As Crystal nears the station and steps inside, she's greeted with fake enthusiasm and smiles. Remaining cautious, Crystal requests a box of cigarettes. As she pays with her emergency money, she inquires about her current location. The woman provides an answer while handing Crystal her change. However, Crystal's sharp instincts tell her something's amiss. Without hesitation, she confronts the couple. Seizing the moment, she grabs a shotgun hidden beneath the counter, swiftly taking down the man, followed by his accomplice. After ensuring her immediate safety, Crystal conducts a quick search of the gas station. Her search reveals the hidden bodies from earlier. She gathers a few essential items, including some ammunition, but her discoveries don't stop there. Outside, while inspecting a pickup truck, Crystal uncovers a Croatian license plate concealed beneath a fake Arkansas one. Even more concerning is the bomb trap she finds connected to the driver's side door. As Crystal Crystal continues her journey, she meets another individual caught up in this cruel game, Gary. She warns him about the rigged truck. Choosing to avoid potential danger, they decide to board a nearby train filled with refugees. However, Gary is suspicious, believing these people to be merely actors hired to play roles in this twisted scenario. Their journey takes another unexpected turn when Croatian soldiers suddenly storm the train, adding another layer of complexity to their situation. Soon, Gary and Crystal find themselves in a dangerous situation with the Croatian soldiers and refugees. Gary, desperate to prove their innocence, tries to convince the soldiers about the hunt and voices his suspicions about the refugees. To everyone's surprise, one refugee, known as Mike, confesses to Gary that he is in fact an actor. However, he clarifies that he's the only actor among the refugees and is aligned with the hunters. Despite his ties to the hunters, Mike admits that the raid by the Croatian soldiers was not anticipated. Seeking Gary's cooperation, he offers him a head start to escape. But Gary, not one to be easily fooled or intimidated, uses a hidden grenade he discovers on the actor to kill him. 
Meanwhile, Crystal is separated from the chaos and is taken to a refugee camp. At the camp, an officer meets with her, demanding her papers. When Crystal asks about her location, she is met with silence. Persistent and clever, she starts guessing different places, eventually pinpointing her location correctly as Croatia, thanks to her encounter with the truck's license plate earlier. Hoping to get out of the situation, she requests them to contact the American Embassy. But, rather than facilitating her request, the officers introduce her to Dawn. He is another individual who, like her, was among those chosen to be hunted. This reunion adds another turn to their already twisted journey. Crystal and Dawn find a moment of peace in the camp's kitchen, grabbing a meal. As they sit down, Dawn echoes the same theories that Gary had shared earlier, the belief that they are the targets of a hunt. Their meal is interrupted by the arrival of Oliver, who introduces himself as a representative from the US Embassy. He assures them he's there to escort them safely to the embassy. As they begin their journey, Oliver starts to inquire about the circumstances leading to their involvement in the hunt. Crystal, always alert, finds his questions unsettling and becomes suspicious of his true intentions. Acting on her instincts, Crystal forces Oliver out of the car and, in a decisive move, runs him over. As she goes through the car's trunk for clues, Dawn is overwhelmed, panicking about the consequences of killing an embassy official. However, his shock intensifies intensifies when he sees the lifeless body of Gary in the trunk, confirming that Oliver was not an ally but another hunter. Amidst the chaos, Crystal discovers a map which she believes might lead them to the hunter's location. Dawn, shaken by the recent events, suggests that they should escape using the car, but Crystal, fueled by a desire for justice, has other plans. She intends to use the map to track down those behind the hunt and confront them head on. In a fortified bunker, the group orchestrating the hunt gathers. Among them is Sergeant Dale, a consultant to the hunters. He tries to maintain order, urging the group to remain silent. However, they don't take him seriously and continue to mock him. Suddenly, the voice of Athena, the brains behind the hunt, cuts through the chatter via a radio, strongly demanding their silence. Outside the bunker, one of the hunters steps out for a brief moment to relieve himself by a tree. Unbeknownst to him, Crystal is lurking in the shadows. Seizing the opportunity, she swiftly swiftly takes him down. Back inside, the remaining hunters are on edge, alerted by noises from the outside. Their attention is quickly redirected as Crystal springs into action. She manages to shoot one of the men and injures several others. She then confronts Dale, managing to temporarily incapacitate him, and swiftly deals with another woman, stabbing her. Crystal grapples with another man over a rifle. Just when it seems he has the upper hand by emptying the gun's ammunition, Crystal finds one last bullet in the chamber and shoots him. She then targets a sniper, ensuring he too doesn't pose a threat. For a moment, it appears as though Crystal has taken down all the adversaries. However, Dale, with the last ounce of his strength, lunges at her. A fierce hand-to-hand -hand battle ensues between the two. In the heat of the moment, Crystal grabs a pipe from the ceiling, using it to fend off Dale. She manages to overpower him, but stops short of delivering a fatal blow. In a tense moment, the radio crackles to life with Athena's voice. She asks, asks if Dawn has managed to deal with Crystal. In response, Crystal swiftly points her gun at Dawn, casting a shadow of doubt over his loyalty. As Dawn tries to assure her that he isn't in league with the Hunters, Athena's voice becomes more insistent, urging him to eliminate Crystal. Dawn pleads with Crystal, trying to convince her not to believe Athena's words, but Crystal decides not to take any chances and shoots him. After confirming to Athena that Dawn is dead, Crystal receives a challenge from her to come and face her directly. Seizing a moment of calm, Crystal engages in a conversation with the injured Dale. As their exchange progresses, she becomes more determined to find Athena. Using Dale's vulnerability to her advantage, she presses on his wound, cracking the information about Athena's whereabouts out of him. Once she gets what she needs, she ends Dale's life too. The scene then transitions to a flashback from a year earlier. We are taken to Athena's upscale office, where two corporate representatives await her. The atmosphere is tense as they discuss a text message that Athena had sent referencing the hunt. Athena tries to brush it off, claiming it was just a harmless joke. However, the representatives are not amused. One of them, deeply concerned about the potential backlash from the public, deems it a possible public relation disaster. Upon confronting Athena about the rising controversy, he firmly tells her that, considering the surrounding uproar, stepping down from her role is the only option. Athena, reeling from 
from the weight of the allegations and the impending blow to her reputation, asks for the names of those who have been propagating the conspiracy theory, suggesting she partakes in hunting humans for sport. Fueled by a desire for vengeance against these conspiracists, she decides to turn the fictitious game into a chilling reality, aiming to exact revenge on those who tarnished her name. Eight months before the events of the hunt, the orchestrators gather around a projection screen, selecting their targets. As they sift through potential candidates, an image of Crystal pops up on the screen. The presenter starts reading out some of Crystal's opinions about Athena. Athena's manner changes instantly as anger flashes across her face. In that moment, she marks Crystal as her prime opponent. Fast forward to the present, and Crystal is seen approaching a grand mansion. Through the intercom, Athena's voice warns her that unless she leaves her firearm behind, the explosives planted beneath the entrance gate will be detonated. Not willing to risk it, Crystal complies and steps onto the premises unarmed. Inside, the atmosphere is thick with tension. As she tiptoes through the mansion, she comes across a wall filled with photographs, including her own and those of other hunted individuals. In the heart of the house, Athena awaits busily engaged in cooking. As they talk, it becomes clear that while Crystal doesn't recognize Athena, Athena too has made a grave error. She's unaware that she's mistakenly hunted the wrong Crystal. Athena's blunder becomes evident. She had been driven by online conspiracies about a Crystal who had spread malicious rumors about her. But this Crystal standing before her is not that person. She's an innocent with the same name. After the shocking revelation, tensions flare and Crystal, fueled by by rage, seizes a knife and lunges at Athena. The ensuing battle between them is raw and intense. With fierce determination, Crystal hurls objects at Athena, attempting to gain the upper hand. At one point, she manages to force Athena backwards over the fireplace. But Athena, displaying her own set of skills, retrieves a shotgun and pursues Crystal to the upper level of the mansion. The struggle for control over the shotgun ensues, but Crystal, using her momentum, pushes Athena down the stairs, following her by leaping down soon after. The chaos continues, with Athena now wielding a knife and successfully landing a blow on Crystal. The fierce confrontation spills outside for a bit before they find themselves back in the kitchen. Here, in a desperate move, Athena stabs Crystal with a cutter. But in a twist, as Athena tries to deliver a final kick, Crystal manages to pull her in, turning the cutter against her. The end of this brutal encounter sees Athena lifeless, while a a gravely injured Crystal manages to stand. With sheer willpower, Crystal cauterizes her wound using a blowtorch. She then freshens up, choosing one of Athena's elegant dresses and slipping into her shoes, symbolizing a transition of power. Exiting the mansion, Crystal's eyes settle on Athena's fancy private jet. As she boards, she confidently informs the taken aback stewardess and captain of Athena's death. Holding them at gunpoint, she demands they fly her home. The movie concludes with Crystal, having effectively replaced Athena, all while showcasing that justice, in its own twisted way, has been served. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our recap. Like the video, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.